All right, got another um, scan here that actually has an interior wall. I don't know if you can see it right through there. Um, so once again, if you're trying to make an overall form, this is kind of problematic to do it. So we want to look at ways to kind of maybe address that. Um, and let's go ahead and get this kind of cut down. I'm going to go to like a side view like this real quickly and get rid of all this area that's the shoulders. So we'll do a plain cut and try to rotate this. Now this is going to be a little tricky because if I keep it at that angle and pull it down, I just got to make sure I get past the hair button that was there. That looks like it did. And we'll go ahead and hit accept. Okay, and that did a, pr uh, a little bit off there. Let's undo that nice thing about Mesh Mixer. You can click undo and it will just uh, jump back. Now, what I'm going to do instead of cutting it at that angle, just cut it at a slight more angle to this. Um, all right, uh, that's good. Hit accept. Okay. Uh, worked out pretty well. Got a few little random things that we probably could take care of. So that worked out pretty good as far as um, you know what's there as far as the um, the form and all. Okay, so want to look at um, uh, you know, but still, it's got the double wall there. And actually, let's sorry, I should have turned off the fill. So one more time, back it out again jumps back to where it was before. All right, once again, slight angle, turn off the fill, no fill. Okay, so there's that inside form. Once again, first technique is to do the select tool, fake a little area, hit expand. And on this one, I think when you do that, it picks everything. So this is not detached on the inside. It somehow is attached around this. So that's one issue. Now, the other thing that's, you know, so we're going to use the technique where we basically go to a view like this, pick it. Now, the other problem is that this is actually very um, intense geometry. Okay, so what might be worthwhile before we uh, even do that, and then we can actually try to cut this open in the top here as well, is to um, go in and it's underneath, once again, once you pick it, hit expand, and then underneath the edit, say we want to reduce the amount of uh, polygons. Okay, now this is going to take a little bit to sit here and process, through, process and get through. Okay, but basically it's going to, in this case, go for almost what is 800,000, looks like triangles, I think is what's describing there. Um, so they can bound about half of that. Okay, so let's let it go through and do that. So let's kind of process it. And let's go ahead, that's percentage, so we're down 50%. And let's go ahead and hit ex uh, accept. And then we'll finish this operation. Now, we're seeing in this one, um, okay, let me clear the selection and we'll just take a look at it real quick. If you press the space bar, make sure you select that one. This shows you the triangles. Now, this is still a very smooth model, okay? That's starting to show some of the triangles and all that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not super accurate, but it's still a pretty good model. All right, so before we use the technique of selecting outside and then inverting it. I'll do one more cut on this and that is get rid of this kind of very ragged edge up here at the top. Okay, so once again I'm going to grab the plain cut tool. Make sure it's set to no fill. Uh, trying to find that arrow. There it is right there. Flip it around and just basically pull this up to the very tip top. Okay. So what I'm looking to do is get rid of all that ragged edge that's there. I can go back in and refill it later on. Now, this might work better if I angle it just a little bit. There we go. That's good. And pull it up just a little bit. All right, try that. Okay. Now, once again, you can try 
real quickly do the select type E and still picking everything so it's still attached somewhere or other places in there okay so I've still got to deal with that um, let's do this real quick pick that little spot um, fill all right that's good now I'm gonna try one other thing uh, I'm gonna fill this little bitty patch here I'm looking around the edge I want to make sure I have any open holes um, Oh, actually, it should work okay for this. So let's accept that, clear that selection. Do this one more time, and this time I'm going to double click on the edge. Notice it goes around, picks everything. Now, I've got a big area here, so I'm going to clear that and try again. Reduce the brush size down until it's only picking that little piece there, maybe even smaller. Double click on it. Okay, it's selected all the way around. Now we're going to go back to modify, and this is we're going to expand um, green, and we're just going to keep doing that. So it keeps pulling outwards, uh, and we're trying to make sure we capture all that. Try one more time, expand ring, um, and if I need to, I can always come in here and select a little bit more, make it even around this. Um, all right, so at this point, we will come up here and try to use the Erase and Fill tool. Now, when you do it first time, it's not going to work. Um, there's a couple issues. It's very subtle, but um, in this area that I selected, there's actually a couple open triangles right there. So those are preventing it from kind of figuring out what to do with the rest of this properly. Okay, and I think, let's see, oops, hang on. Yeah, for this selection, that's the problem there. So, actually, what we're going to do is cancel this, clear selection, come back in and do another selection, and go ahead and pre-fill those holes right there. This new little area, hit erase and fill, that takes care of them, hit accept, um, clear section again, and this time I'm going to, once again, double click on that edge. Go ahead and modify it, expand it several times. Okay. Alright, now go around and check the rest of this edge and make sure there's no more little triangles, little holes like that. If you want to, you can smooth it out. Um, let me try this as well. So there is one other tool to try to use, and that is the modify expand tool or they call excuse me smooth boundary tool so what that'll do is basically look for a smoother kind of edge around it um, based on what you have selected so that's what it ended up picking okay so that's good I'll accept that and now you can see it's made a nice smooth selection like that now let's try a recent fill and hopefully we don't have any problems it will take care of it which it did so once again I'll look at the side profile looks pretty good um, let's go around to the front view of this and just take a look. We can't beat that, I think, as far as the shape and all. Okay, so do that, clear that. So now we've got basic our overall form. Still got a problem with the inside of this, okay, but uh, otherwise, oops, let's go ahead and get rid of this one real quick while we're here. Um, my brush is really tiny. So let's clear that, try again, and just bump it up a little bit. There we go. And erase and fill. All right. And then clear selection. OK. So now we're going to try that technique where we pick um, a particular view. OK. And we pick a little bit, then pick anything that's visible. Oh, let's do one more. Just kind of cleaning this up a little bit, trying to do a little lasso tool around this part that's all by itself over here. And that's where it does that weird kind of selection. Um, this just may work better with just a good old brush. Yep. That I took care of it. There's some small other little areas right there. Um, let's try the lasso tool this time. Mm, I always it. Wish it wouldn't go through and do that. Okay, select the lasso tools. Um, all right, I'm not going.
going to worry about it at this point. All right, just clear the selection. Okay. So let's once again go to this right view, back up so we can see everything. We'll do the select. Make a little area. And remember, it's under Modify, Select Visible. First time out, you just choose it. And give it a second to go through and do that. Cool. I'm going to do orthographic views to move around. And once again, I'll go back this time, hold down the shift key, and say select visible. And once again, it's doing the lasso now because of how I end up moving. So now I'll use the, now, gotta be careful. If I go to this view, notice it'll actually end up picking some of the inside. So I'm gonna skip this view, okay, for right now. Instead, I'll go to this side view. And once again, choose modify, hold down the shift key, select visible. See how that works. Yeah, when you're in the um, views like this, probably using your right mouse button is the best way to move around. Now, I will try to do like that. And once again, hold down the shift key, select visible. So I'm using the back view because I got a whole big area I'm going to miss here. Um, but I angled it so you won't see the inside. And hopefully that'll capture that. I'm doing pretty good. One little more area to do. Um, once again, hold down the shift key. Select visible. Sorry for my crazy line there. But that's, it's kind of like if you click an open window, the lasso tool becomes active um, with it. All right. We're in pretty good shape. Let's see if we can get back to the home view. Ah, that was tumble. Easier. All right. <laughs> that was my original selection. Um, let's do... Do that. So I capture all that underneath there. So this one, because of just the you know shape, the ears, and the bun back there, you know, got to do a lot of select visibles to kind of capture it. If I wasn't in the, the lasso tool as I am here, um, I could easily do the um, uh, just the brush tool and modify it that way. But since I'm doing this, you get to see my crazy spaghetti lights there because um, it takes a little bit to go through and do this. All right, I think we're in good shape now. Once again, after you do that, you go down and you're going to invert, okay? Because this is what we want to keep now. Hopefully did everything right. Got everything on the inside. Ah, we did pick a little bit there. Um, some areas. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this. Okay. And do a few holes, but let's go fix the chin real quick. So this one I want to do just because I want to kind of um, do the erase and fill. Let's reduce the brush size down real quick. Fix this little area here first. Okay, accept, clear. Let's um, select again. And this I can probably just do with a quick brush around it, keeping it up against that edge. Let's try B, that's a smooth boundary, cool. Accept that, and erase and fill, F. There we go. Let's go take a look at that, pretty good. All right, now some of these other ones are not really that important because they're not as, you know, visible and all that. Uh, that one's a little bit more problematic, but we're going to clear the selection, go down to edit, and try to make it into a solid. Give it a second fill, fill up 100. 27 holes there. Let's see what we can do with it. All right. There we go. Once again, because it's not in a real visible area, I'm not going to worry about that. If it was, then I would definitely do something else. So now we got a nice, um, you know, closed up form that can definitely be used with the slicer program to create the stack version or the um, interlocking one as well. Okay, so that's in good shape to go with things here. 